Hi, welcome to Health Talk with Nicole and Dr. Martha. I'm Nicole Tetro. And I'm Dr. Martha. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to be talking about a great topic today, shoveling snow. How, How many people fun, are sick right? of that, right? <laughs> so today I really need to focus on ergonomics. It's amazing to me. I watch my neighbors out with their snow shovels and you know, being a chiropractor, it's so difficult sometimes not to go out and say, oh gosh, you're really going to hurt your back if you keep doing it that way. <laughs> we can't shut it off, right? I'm a physical therapist, so I have the same sort of thoughts. I can't stop. I can't shut it off. But boy, some of the things we see. I know. And actually what I'm hearing lately, um, every other person coming in complaining of something, and I think it's because all the shoveling I did last night or yesterday. It's true. So it's a hot topic. It <laughs> is a lot of back and shoulder injuries. What about you, Nicole? Are you doing a lot of shoveling this winter? Um, I can't really lie. <laughs> I've done a little bit. I live a little bit more out in the country, so I rely on my dad with the big plow and my husband as well. Oh, so nice. I've gotten out of a lot of the um, heavy shoveling. However, we do plow, or I'm sorry, shovel the, the walkway, and it's been really heavy. Yes, and heavy snow is when we injure ourselves the most. Instead of taking those smaller loads, we want to get it done really Absolutely. fast. I have fallen in that trap for sure. Oh. I want to get it done faster, quicker. <laughs> yeah. And that's mm -hmm. when we do a lot of twisting and we do a lot of throwing of the snow, things that are just really um, causing us injury. So I've put together this great little PowerPoint for us today just to help us kind of learn about what really happens when we're shoveling snow. I know for me, uh, I didn't really think very much until I really learned about biomechanics, what my body was doing a lot. Absolutely. So proper shoveling techniques, it's so important. And we're actually gonna do a little segment outside, so stay with us, because that's <laughs> gonna be fun. Let's go ahead and talk about what happens to our bodies. One of the things I didn't really think too much about is the stress on our heart. It is amazing. I mean, only after a couple of minutes of actually shoveling snow, we have our heart rates up to 86% of our maximum rate. That's a lot. You know, I don't know if you talk with your patients at all about the cardiac cycle and how that affects you, but having really good heart health is important. I used to work a little bit in the cardiac rehab center when in the beginning of my studies. Mm. So we did learn when you do like the upper arm bike yeah. and I was taught that, you know, it definitely is a cardiac workout and you don't realize trans, you know, translating that into real life activities, mm -hmm. what that does. So absolutely. I have been familiarized with that. Well, we're all very familiar with weekend warriors, right? You know, <laughs> we don't do much during the week and then all of a sudden on the weekend, you know, we have to do a lot unless we get snow on the those early morning work days and we're trying to get out. Um, but back to our slide when we were talking about what happens, the sprains that occur to our ligaments and the strains on our muscles. And I want to talk specifically about certain areas of the body that really get affected the most. You know, we talked a little bit about doing that twisting motion with our upper bodies and not really having good support with our lower legs, having them in a good Absolutely. wide okay. stance to support what we're doing. So here's a couple of muscles that I know Nicole treats these all day long, Absolutely. so do I. <laughs> so one of them we, you know, we call QL, that's our very term of endearment for that <laughs> muscle. It's actually a quadratus lumborum is the big long ana anatomical term. to say, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the muscle when you're doing rotation of your low back that gets injured all day long. And whether you're rotating or side bending, I mean, that's what we're doing when we're shoveling, right? So the other muscle that we see all day long, I call it the butt muscle. My patients <laughs> just love it when I call it that, but it, the piriformis, and that is the muscle that entraps our sciatic nerve. That's the big honking nerve that comes out of our pelvis. And I know you must treat I this too. I was just gonna say, I just treated someone yesterday with the sciatic procedure that I do in my clinic. Nice, and that's part <laughs> of the Bowen treatment that you Absolutely. do? Absolutely, yep. Oh, fantastic. Yep. Yeah, and what it does, it helps release that piriformis muscle. And that's yeah. what happens. That muscle gets really tight, and it, it actually pinches 
you know, causes an impingement to the sciatic nerve. And that's what causes that leg that pain going down. down. Yep. Absolutely. How many times do you see people go to get out of their chair and, oh, you know, they're hanging onto their butt. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens. The butt muscle. <laughs> right. <laughs> so back to our slide, we'll talk about our shoulders because we don't really think too much about our upper body when we're shoveling. But that really causes a lot of strain, especially if we're not using that nice, good, strong abdominal muscles, keeping our core strong as we're bending forward. So then we tend to use our arms and our shoulders. And what happens, that bicep muscle in the front of the arm and the tricep muscle in the back of the arm get really overworked, our rotator cuff muscle, how many people Absolutely. come in with shoulder pain? Do you know there's only one bony attachment for this entire huge joint right here one bony attachment you know where that is our collarbone right here it attaches to our sternum that's it the rest of it's all ligaments and muscles how many times do you treat shoulders a day <laughs> other than low back that's probably the next one oh for there's sure. the top two things i see in the practice and i don't think people realize that these muscles aren't meant for endurance Right. And I'm such a big core person. I talk about core with everything. My kids for their sports and my patients. If you don't have a strong core, you don't have a good foundation. It's, yeah. I tell people it's like building a house on sand. You oh. can't be strong if in these areas or even your, your legs if yeah. you don't have a strong core. That could be a whole other segment for us. And maybe that gives us an idea for I another think segment. That's a great one. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> <laughs> so back to our slideshow. So talking about our upper body, talking about the lower body. So let's actually look at what we can do to try to prevent some of these things from happening. What's our best defense? Now, arthritis is a big deal. I mean, people come in, a lot of people have these arthritic changes, what we call DJD or DDD, degenerative joint disease, degenerative disc disease, right? All day long. And what happens is we're not keeping that flexibility in our body. Stretching has kind of gone by the wayside, and it's really a great thing way into your 80s and 90s. You should still Absolutely. be keeping that flexibility. And any time you have to be doing any type of manual labor, for sure. Do you recommend that for Absolutely. your patients? Absolutely. I think that people are so busy nowadays, they just don't stop and take a moment yeah. to take care of themselves. Stretching takes a few seconds because you don't want to bounce when you do the stretch. You don't want to go, oh, yep, there I stretch. You really want to hold it for just a few seconds, maybe five to ten, depending on how you're feeling, yeah. to let that muscle and all those fibers adapt to that new position. You know what I also see? Patients holding their breath. Oh, absolutely. Oh, they're stretching and it hurts. And what do they do? But they hold their breath. It's the worst thing you can do. Your muscles need oxygen. You got to breathe. So another preventive thing that you can do other than the stretching, I like ice and I know it's a little controversial. Do you use heat? Do you use ice? And I get this question all the time. And for inflammation, I find with the joint complex, ice is the best. Now, if you were dealing with muscles and you're trying to relax stiffness and there's no pain involved, heat is great. It's very comforting. In the wintertime, that's what we like Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. <laughs> but ice to reduce that inflammation. And then posture. You know, we talked oh, about huge. this. Part of the posture is really trying to keep the, the core very strong. So keep those abdominal muscles really tight. And taking breaks. Break it up into smaller amounts. There's no need. I know we're in a hurry. Everybody's got things to do. We never leave ourselves enough time, right? But taking smaller loads, that's the better way well, to do it. if you get it. injured, you won't have any time for anything. That's so. right. If you get injured, you're going to be home anyway. So, And the other thing is to really make sure that you're utilizing proper um, lifting and shoveling techniques so we don't get those injuries in our low back. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's take a look at a picture of someone who has really abominable <laughs> I know. posture in my but we opinion. laugh but that's what we see i know it's what we see all day long and hey i'm guilty of it too here we go you know this poor, poor guy. guy i know he's going to be in one of our clinics tomorrow. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so as we take a look at him you know look at how that back is rounded and twisted um, he's you know most likely using one of those straight handled shovels which we're going to talk about that too and you know he's unfortunately the way he's bending at his waist it's it's good to bend forward but you see how he's rotated and twisting it's just never a good way and look at the shoulders inappropriately stretching those 
uh, back muscles. We didn't talk a lot about those, but they're long and stringy and they're not very thick. Right. And you stretch those out over and over, you're, you're bound to have injury. Yep, it's true. So some of the things that you can actually do, it's important to have a wide stance that really gives you that support of your lower body. And you want to keep that back straight. So you're bending at the waist, but you want, instead of that curve that we saw in him, let's get that back nice and straight. Put the weight on your front foot, push with the legs. Make sure you keep the load really close to your body. And instead of twisting and throwing it over your shoulder, you know, keep those abs really tight, lift with your legs and turn the feet. And if mm -hmm. you at all possible, push the snow. So let's take a picture of what that looks like. Much nice better. straight back. <laughs> he's got a bent knee in the back. You can see he's really supporting himself. And there's a great shovel for you that has the curved handle and just a lot more ergonomic. So let's head outside. Yay. Um, do that <laughs> and show some shoveling. No. <laughs> so what do you think, Nicole? Take a look at my posture and let me see what you think. Oh boy, I'm not really liking that whole lot. You're gonna have to come see me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> not utilizing those back that muscles. That didn't look good? No. Oh, okay. Gotta so use those legs. Well, we've created a little check sheet to minimize the effort. So you're gonna stand with your feet wide apart. Bend at the waist, keeping your back straight. Put weight on your front foot and push with your legs into the snow. Keep the shovel load close to your body as you lift, shifting the weight to your back foot. So you want to keep it as close as possible. Lift with your legs and your arms, not your back. Remember, we talked about how small those muscles are. Yeah. Pivot your entire body by turning your feet in the direction you want to place the snow instead of twisting. So it's just one extra step, guys. That's it. And whenever possible, push the snow instead of throwing it. Simple yeah. as that, right? Do a little. So you got to activate those strong leg muscles and the core. Nice. I think we did it. Well done. <laughs> well, welcome back with us. We're now back indoors, but Thanks I haven't goodness. taken my hat off yet because it was cold. Well, we just want to thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you learned a few tips that you'll utilize and hopefully the snow will go away soon. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on the show, please visit www.elitehealthandwellnessvt.com. Over to the right, you'll find a section to submit your question and we'll try to answer it right here on the show. Thank you so much. Have a happy and healthy day.